my parents not raising me correctly. And it has affected me as an adult. And I feel people need to know that I am not my fault. I am not my fault. I blame everything on my parents. I want to get that on record. It's my mom and dad's fault. To be honest with you, I was so in my mind so it's like every third on how the performance was going minute by minute that I wasn't aware of there's 200 people staring at you while you're talking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a lot of comics say that. You know, that, that no gives stage the third fight yeah. Saturday yeah. of the month. Okay. I was so worried about what I was okay, so no, so going to say next okay, so it's the third that it took my mind off of those people standing. Some people down from so it, it like, okay, took that stage fight out of me. You, you know eight eight right. And because yeah. I was able to do that the first time, the second and third times I got on stage, I almost had that feeling of, Nervousness, oh, but then I reverted back to, well, you done did it one time. You, you didn't die, it didn't kill you. You can do it again. I had to BS myself. Like, you know what I mean? And then it just accumulated. You'll see some people that you'll. Pretty much everyone that Richard Pryor's done for us. I did see a cafe performance that Richard Pryor did. I didn't see it personally, <laughs> but it's online. He did a cafe performance when he was going into, he, he wasn't doing material. He was just talking of what was in his head and doing stuff. And then, to be honest, as far as a real show, it wasn't punchline after punchline, funny after funny because he was just talking about his thoughts at the time for 45 minutes. It was a long 45 minutes, but it was Richard Pryor. You're good at listening, you know what I mean? But then that kind of let me know that some, even the greatest comedians that we look up to, or everyday people look up to, they're still real people. You know, in that show, he wasn't going for laughs. He just had stuff on his mind he wanted to get out. And it was just an amazing thing to see. So anything Richard Pryor's done, Relax, Kevin Hart's special, I forget the name of it, exciting. Kevin Hart's like, one of my new favorites. Like, I forgot the special that he did, but the one where he's talking about his daughter was on top of the bunk bed and pushed a little girl off and said, this is the castle, there's only room for one princess, so I had to push her off. <laughs> that, that special, whatever name of that was, was my other favorite. Kids in the Hall. Which I'm an old school cat. Kids in the Hall. Uh, I love uh, Tim and Eric's awesome show, Great Job. Even though they've quit doing them too. It was just so out of the blue, so different than anything else that ever been done. I just loved it. Uh, Saturday Night Live, I think they've been a staple in America for so long. It's like, it, it, it sounds bad as a comic, but it's like Saturday Night Live. I know they're going to be there. So if there's something else on that I'm like, oh shit, I've been waiting months to see this movie. Then I'm going to watch that movie. And I'm like, well, Saturday Night Live, they'll be there. But I don't think they're as hot as they used to be. But they got some good people. Right? So Dave Chappelle was my favorite sketch show at the time, of course. It was, it was everybody. So that's about it. Key and Peele, I don't like really. I don't think they're funny. Um, Jordan Peele, I think, just come out with a movie or something that he did. I can't remember the name of the movie. It had nothing to do with comedy. I think it was like a drama or a scary movie. Which is really good. I wish I could remember the name of it. But that's the only thing I've seen good come out of their pairing. But maybe I shouldn't have said that. And I don't care. Uh, married with children. Married with children, hands down. I believe, this is a true story, I really believe there's only two types of people in this world. The Bundys and the Darcy's. That's it. I'm a Bundy. And the Darcy's are... He's a Bundy. Kurt, Kurt's a Bundy. I'm trying to explain the Bundys and Darcy's. 
Christine's a Darcy. She's a Darcy. Darcy's are. They're, they're just born with good luck. Things happen to them good. The Bundys were dealt. I, I'm not my fault. I'm a product of my parents, and I have to make up for their faults or whatever. And so, therefore, it makes me a Bundy. And so, that's my favorite show. That's true. I'd like to go on with Kevin Hart, but I think I'd probably match up better with Ron White as far as style and material. Eddie Murphy, old Eddie Murphy, old rock star Eddie Murphy from '82. Delirious Eddie Murphy, not not uh, the nutty professor Eddie Murphy. <laughs> So Red Fox, Eddie Murphy, uh, Rodney Dangerfield, of course. Um, the Roastmaster General himself. Uh, I got to put him in there because he's funny, but I think I can do what he does. Um, is that four? And then the fifth one would have to be. Aunt Esther. I, it had to be Aunt Esther. She used to do comedy before she got on uh, Sanford and Son. But, uh, but it, I think, yeah, she would be the icing on the cake. Uh, the next five years, um, I'd like to... I'd, li I'd like to go to California. I know it's cliche for a lot of comedians, but I've done 14 years of comedy on the East Coast, and uh, I think it's time to go where industry is, because industry is not here in the left deck of the U.S. Which, oh, Florida, I'm sorry. But if you look at it on the map, it looks like a left penis. Anyway, but I've done 14 years here, and I've been up to North New York, all the way down to Miami, all the way to the left to Louisiana, and everything in that triangle. My next step is to go where industry is looking for people, and that would be New York and California. And I'm not a New York comic, you know, I'm not an asshole in your face. I'm more of a laid-back Cali style to where, but, I, but then I don't know if California is seeing the kind of style that I do. You know what I mean? Um, maybe. But we'll see when I get there. I don't know. I think I'm good. I mean, maybe some... Maybe comedy acting. But uh, well, other than that, I feel I'm a dancing monkey. You know, throw some money at me and watch me dance. <laughs> Um, comedy writing, yeah, but I don't want to be that guy in the cubicle writing stuff for other people to dance to. I want to be the dancer. You know what I mean? It's just something in me. Like, I wasn't breastfed as a kid, so comedy is like my titty milk. And, uh, yeah, that, that, that'd be about it. Maybe comedy acting, but definitely stand up till I die. Um, hit me up on Facebook, Comedian Billy B, uh, that's B as in, well, I don't want to say boy, um, I'm too old to be that, but, but not D either. A lot of people say, oh, Billy D. Williams? No, bitch, B. Billy B, as in beat your ass, you say Billy D. Williams again. Um, Instagram, I forgot it, but I'm sure you can find it, and if you type in Billy B. And Twitter, well, it's Billy B. Tweet. Aww, yeah. Billy B. So Tweet. Uh, let me borrow some money. <laughs> you think I'm bullshitting? I am serious. You see this drink here? It looks good. It's like, oh, he's got a drink in the bar. No, they, I can't afford this one. They're going to make me pay. Like, I can't drink all of it or I got to pay for it. So I'm only going to drink until that much, and then I'm going to ask for donations so to pay for the rest of it. Yeah, just give me a sandwich or a sleeping bag 
a bed, a hug, something. Just let me know. Like, you ain't got to donate 15 cents to a homeless comedian, but at least, at least just shake my hand, give me a hug, and be like, I'm with you, bro. Yeah, uh, this is Billy B. Uh, performing at this awesome club that we can't tell because we'll have to pay them for advertisement. But check me out on thecutiepie.com.